Hi guys, it's me. Um, if it looks a little different, it's because I got a new computer. It's one of those desk ones. I call him Mr. Mac, but I think he's formally known as an iMac. This is a follow-up video on a video I made just a few days ago, giving people hints and tips on how to get into fashion design, and it was telling my story about how I got into designing dresses and gowns for all these glamorous girls. And Now, I had quite a few questions I got asked and I thought I'd go through them now answering them. I also thought I'd show you some of my equipment that I use to make my dresses and I wanted to show you some of my portfolio because portfolios are definitely the main thing that you need to concentrate on to get into art school. I had applied already straight from school and I had built up my portfolio and when I applied I didn't get accepted the first time and that's probably because my portfolio wasn't really in the kind of mind frame and the way that they work in the art schools. So I'll show you mine in a little bit but first I'm going to answer some questions that some people have asked. Now one of my first questions came from Aya 17 Shah. Now I'm dyslexic so I'm not exactly sure if that's how you say it. She said that she flunked twice in school because she chose the wrong subjects. And now she's doing fashion design and she asked me, did at any point I feel like I might not be successful in fashion or did I ever have any doubt? Yes! When I was doing the course, I obviously found out I was dyslexic and a lot of the technical aspect of making clothes and dresses really confused me and I felt a bit behind compared to everybody else. So I could see all these people making these crazy creations with all this fancy pattern cut. Whereas I found it a lot easier to do it on the mannequin and more visual. So I was draping it and working it out on the mannequin. And now that kind of sent me back a little bit. Then all of my college friends and me all had to do placements, so we all went to London, like they kind of try to kind of guide you to go to London if you want to be a designer. So I went to London and um, I had a placement with the designer and when I got there I just knew it wasn't for me. It was just so fast paced, the kind of working hours were really ridiculous, I thought this kind of life isn't for me. So I lasted one day and then came back up to Scotland and I felt like a failure because all of my other college friends were still down there working for the designers for a month or two months or three months some of them and I'd given up after a day. But now I know it's because maybe the London side of things and the way of working for another designer isn't for me. Because when you've got things like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, it means, and the internet in general, it means that you can work from a rural place and still reach a lot of the same people through the internet. I have a friend that was in my class and she works in a farm and does her collections in a farm in the middle of nowhere and she actually has been featured in Vogue magazine and things so you know it just shows you that you don't really need to move to London and do the whole London thing. So yeah there was a lot of times at, when I was at art school doing fashion that I kind of questioned what I was doing and even when I left um, I was kind of like, well, where do I go now? And it was only up until maybe last year that I started to work out where I was taking things. So, I mean, you're young and you have a lot of time left, but when you do find that kind of passion and that niche that you like, mine was the dresses, then maybe that's when things will start to go well and they'll click into play. The next question that I got asked by Cobweb333, well, did I learn my dressmaking skills from my course? Um, or did I go somewhere else to pick them Yes, up? I went to a course which teaches you how to do pattern cutting. Not all fashion colleges do. Some of them just teach you how to draw and sketch and kind of pick the fabrics and then pass it on to someone else, like a technical assistant who then makes the outfits for you. But in a way, I kind of think that's a little bit cheating. And I also think that if you want to do your own kind of label or your own products that you're going to be making, you have to be able to do it yourself because to send off a pattern piece to a company to make them is quite time consuming and it's also quite expensive yeah. but I think real fashion design courses show you how to do all that. And Cobweb333's last question was do I have any fancy equipment or um, do I make everything just with my sewing machine? When I first started my degree I bought this sewing machine, it's got loads of fancy buttons and it tells you how to do loads but I only ever use the basic functions. This is my overlocker which I say everybody needs as well and that just finishes off raw edges. I'd say everybody should have these 
two machines and also a mannequin. Um, Lauren Loves James M asked me how much did I spend on my sewing machine. Now I think it was probably about £300. I think it's got all these fancy things on it. I don't really know how to use them. It does writing and letters and everything but really all I use it for is to go back and forward. Um, so you don't really need anything too fancy, just a basic sewing machine which you can probably get for around £100 or less even. The RC Sugar sent me a message asking me if there were any good um, fashion schools in Ayrshire. I'm not too sure about over there. Um, I know that I tra had to travel to Glasgow to go to Tramway, which was a really good college and that helped build my portfolio. But the main ones in Scotland would be Edinburgh, which are amazing. Glasgow, which I'm not sure if they do as much pattern cutting and fashion, maybe more textiles, I'm, I'm not really too clued on. Gala Shields, and I know that Gala Shields is maybe a little bit more teaching you the way that it would be done in the industry, so the way that if you worked for a big company, how you would then go along the lines of creating and making outfits. Um, whereas Edinburgh seems to be a, li a little bit more arty and kind of you have free reign to do whatever you want really. You can do stuff that you would see in shop windows or you could do stuff that no one would ever wear in a million years. The last question I got asked was how to defend ECA like the lecturers, the students, the tutors and Edinburgh in general. Obviously I must have liked Edinburgh because I'm still here. ECA is an amazing college to go to so I definitely say if you're looking into fashion design in Scotland then go there. Um, it was a great experience and they still kept it really arty so you were still doing lots of drawing and painting and things and you were free to be as creative as you wanted or you could just do, obviously I was more into kind of wearable things so um, you could walk away from ECA and be a, a high street designer or be someone featured in Vogue. Um, either way, um, it's an amazing course so I definitely recommend it. The tutors were really good as well. You get lots of one-on-one um, -on -one time with them and advice. Um, so I definitely recommend, recommend ECA as a college. Now, one thing that's really important when you want to apply to art school is your portfolio. And I had to go to an art college, like I said, um, to build my portfolio so that I could then get into art school. Um, and the key is to have a good portfolio with lots of drawing. This is one of the first projects that we got set in fourth year and it all started off with this picture of me when I was a wee girl. I used to make my own rosettes and pretend I had won at horse riding. I wasn't very good at horse riding so I had to resort to making them. And this is the kind of thing that I came up with. Now this is a mid board. Every collection that you do should have a mid board where you're just putting images of dresses that you like the detail and it kind of inspires you and you cram it all onto this board. And this is the kind of reference that you keep looking back on. I've got some nice detail here, some ruffles in this dress that I liked. And I went and started looking at cupcakes and how these little cupcake holders are folded. And then I started making them up out of fabric, the way that I made my fake rosette. This was a final dress. Obviously you wouldn't wear it down to Tesco, it was very couture, but you can see the other people in my class as well. Same kind of thing. Um, it was just one big rosette that was in a big circle and that's what created that dress. Now these are the drawings of the designs that came from the inspiration that I just talked about. So. I'm not sure, I think it was six um, kind of outfits we had to um, design. Also, we did little technical drawings as well, which are the kind of, if you were to lay it out flat, it kind of gives you the technical aspect of what it would look like. Um, they don't have to be too lifelike, the, the illustrations. The quirkier they are, the kind of cooler they become. This was the one I ended up making, the big dress that was so full. And this is a technical drawing. And again, it's just playing around with the rosette shapes to make more dresses. And we also do a line-up. You probably won't see it that way. A line-up of our collection as well so that we can see it all drawn out together. As I said before, that was in the Scotland on Sunday. We got some of our pieces. They picked some out and put them in there. The next project that I did was kind of like an eerie stalkery feel. And I was really inspired by... The Virgin Suicides, the book, and it was almost as if someone was stalking you without you knowing, so I took loads of pictures. And it's almost like a lot of my inspiration when I was doing my collections, when I was at art school, came from the idea of like a character, and I would design 
my outfit for a character that I had in my head. So this is Raquel Welsh and I love the way that she looks. She's got the big hair and she was in the 70s a model and actress. So a lot of my kind of ladies in my head that I visualise look like her. So again it's like drawn out in the technical and then you know the creative side of it. Also a couple of fabric swatches which I worked with another des well a fabric designer and she came up with these prints for me so I used all of them and I did a really cool leather jacket. I'll try and look it out of my wardrobe some of the pieces from my final collection. And um, this is one of the leather jackets, Molly I got it, the way people can't see, um, that I made for my collection in my final year and I put lots of pleating in the side of it and then the print that the girl had did for me it's kind of like a biker jacket and then I put all the piping down the back and the detail and the sleeves are just kind of like three quarter length sleeves a few swatches to show the colours and this was inspired by a peacock this outfit and again it's all kind of um, pleated and the girl printed it as well and look, I have my own little label. Dresses with lots of pleating and lots of panelling and there's the fabric swatches. It was all kind of dark colours. This is my little line-up of my collection so I can see it together. And really, that's just what a portfolio is about. Again, lots of drawing. Um, I just say draw, draw, draw loads. You obviously have sketchbooks that for each process, each design collection, you would then fill your sketchbooks with ideas of other designers that you maybe take inspiration from, like details, um, collecting fabrics, um, kind of looking at the past. Um, this was a big belt from the past, I can't remember, a warrior or something. Um, this is like from the 40s or something, the 20s, this kind of shape, quite liked it. So again, you're just collecting everything that inspires you and putting it into sketchbooks. Details, beading, shapes of dresses from the past, dresses and outfits from collections nowadays, images from magazines. These are all the things that you want to be collecting for your inspiration in your sketchbook to create the mood of your collection. So as you can see, that's what a designer's kind of the design process would look like.